I have five delicious recipes to share with you guys, but first, we're gonna have a little chat. What is up you guys? How are you? My name is Kira if you are new and in today's video I am sharing with you five really easy simple ingredients and delicious recipes but before we get into the recipes today I wanted to stop and take a minute and just chat for a second. Just a second. Well if you guys know me and this is not your first time stopping here you know I'm a tad bit long-winded so I'll do this as short as possible but before I do any of these kinds of videos I always feel like I need to come on and give a disclaimer so these five recipes are from every plate now this is not a sponsored video they do not sponsor my videos I just use their service now I do have a referral code but everybody who joins up with every plate gets one so I always leave it in the description box and I get $20 off an order and you get $20 off an order which makes your first box of three recipes just $10 so it's pretty awesome when you see what the recipes are for what you can get for just trying their service for just 10 bucks but they are not sponsored. And now a couple people have said like, hey, yeah, these boxes are great, but I really like it when you share your recipes. But to be honest, you guys, I've been cooking in the kitchen my whole life. I have a lot of recipes in my arsenal that I still have not shared with you guys, but I'm really enjoying the cookbook process. Now, whether I do another cookbook and do it on my own, or if I do it again with Vanessa, I still like to see my recipes in print. It's a little bit different than just making a video about it. So a lot of the times the recipes that I do share with you guys in videos, they're things I find on Pinterest and then I just tweak a little bit to suit my family and so they're not necessarily still my recipes so what is really any different of sharing somebody else's recipe with you guys whether it's pinterest whether it's every plate whether it's my grandmother's either way if it's a recipe you haven't tried before and it's still new to you it might be something that you really enjoy now every few months or so they give me an opportunity to give away free boxes usually i give them to you guys but the last time that I got free boxes I decided to give them to my family because I had never done that before so I called two of my girlfriends and my mother and said hey do you guys want this free box usually I give them away on my channel but do you guys want them so my mom got a box and she tried it and then both of my girlfriends got one now both my mother and my one girlfriend they really enjoyed their boxes they talked a lot about them my dad had fun cooking one of the recipes but my one girlfriend Jill I talk about her all the time she always said she would love the service both her and her husband work full-time jobs they have three kids who are constantly on the go with sports and dance and she's on the PTA and before you know it they're always always running and she said she would love their service but they're a family of five and most of these mail by order kind of door-to-door -door food subscription services their max portions are four Jill said she couldn't even find a place that will let her order a four and a two this way, even if it's six servings, she has enough to feed her family of five. So none of these things ever appealed to her, but she decided to try this because it was free and she decided to just use, well, not free. All you have to do is pay the shipping. And so she decided to just use them and meal prep them for lunches. Well, one of them was this cheesy corn chowder, which I got the same thing because we got a box, you know, the same week and I ended up ordering the same thing. So that's actually a recipe I'm sharing with you as well. And it was so incredibly good that her family has asked for it again. They have asked her already since then, which was only a couple of weeks ago, to make this soup again. And she said, like, I feel converted for somebody who would never even try one of these services because they don't suit my family and we found a recipe that we love so so much and the best part about it is she's dairy free and so she ended up taking this recipe and then converting it to something that she can use for herself with dairy free cream cheese and things like that so that was really awesome that she was able to find a recipe that she truly enjoyed her family truly enjoyed and now she knows she can tweak it to fit her lifestyle 
and food needs. So I just find that pretty incredible and I feel like I always want to share their recipes because I'm extremely impressed with them. Their ingredients are always fresh. Their food is the cheapest of any food delivery service and I really rely on them for lunches. So I'm going to bring you into my kitchen and I'm going to share with you five recipes that I cooked with them that I absolutely fell in love with and I'm going to meet you right back here and you guys tell me what you think of the recipes I'm sharing with you today. So the first recipe that we're starting off with really intrigued me because it was a form of a potato hash, which always sounds so interesting to me, but I've never been into the whole corned beef hash thing. But when I saw the picture and I saw that it was a Southwestern hash with two different kinds of potatoes, and then you put a fried egg on top with like a hot sauce lime crema it just sounded so so good so i was definitely excited and i think the most exciting part is that now every plate lets you either swap out a protein you can swap out like pork for steak if it's a vegetarian meal like this was you could add a protein sometimes you can swap out your veggie so i added chicken to this i thought it would go really really well and so they also send you a southwest a spice blend, a garlic powder. They send you some hot sauce and it's actually Cholula brand, which I thought was pretty awesome. You need two sour creams, some shredded cheddar cheese and some shredded Monterey Jack cheese. We have five Yukon Gold potatoes here and one sweet potato. We have one red pepper, one onion, and then disregard that green pepper. This was made during Christmas time and things were kind of crazy and this recipe almost sat for a week before before I got a chance to make it. So all of every plate's ingredients are always super fresh, but that pepper was starting to see better days. But I have our peppers, our onions, our potatoes all diced up. And so the first thing they want you to do is throw your two different kinds of potatoes, some olive oil and some salt and pepper on a baking sheet and then throw it in a 450 degree oven. And you're gonna do that for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then we're gonna pull it out. We're gonna add those peppers peppers and onions in and give it another toss and then throw it back. But for now, we have our potatoes good and coated and those are going to head on in. Now we're going to make our lime crema. So we're going to put both of those sour creams into a bowl. You're going to add that Cholula. It tells you you can add as little or as much as you want, but I like a good sense of heat and spice. So I added the whole package and then we squeezed in some lime and then we gave it a good mix and that was it. So now it's been 10 or 15 minutes. Our potatoes are tender, but they're not crisp. So we're going to add in some more olive oil, our peppers and onions, a little bit of onion powder, and we're going to throw that back in. Now, because I added the protein, there's no instructions on how to cook it. So I just got out my grill pan and added a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper to each side and just cooked the chicken breast until it was thoroughly cooked all the way through. And then I actually threw my egg into the same pan, which was a no-no for me because this pan was screaming hot. So you can see that as soon as I threw my eggs in there, the white instantly got dark and crispy. It was still super flavorful, just not aesthetically pleasing to the eye, I guess. I mean, I could have done it over again. I just didn't really feel like it. But darn it, I was trying to do it for the tube, you know, trying to give you that good look. And I was so embarrassed about the way that it looked that I sprinkled my cheese over the egg and then put it over the potatoes so you guys didn't see how ugly the egg was. So I really don't feel like my bowl looks like the actual picture. The potatoes, peppers, and onions, however, the sweet potato and the regular potato mixed together were spot on. And so I put that at the bottom of the bowl and then I put my two eggs over the top and I threw the shredded cheese on top and I let it melt. And then I just threw one of the chicken breasts on top and a little bit of that crema and then a wedge of lime and I even cut it open for you to see what it looked like with that egg yolk oozing all over everything and I'm the only one who ate it so I prepped the rest of it for a meal for me for the next day but that was so so delicious. And now speaking of something that I was only going to eat as well, I picked out a black bean stew. Now I've mentioned in some lunch videos that 
I usually use every plate for my lunches. So I'll cook something and then I will set it up for myself for later. So here is some vegetable stock, some Southwest blend, some tomato paste. We have black beans, aroma tomato, half of an onion, some garlic, sour cream, shredded cheese, green onions, and a chipotle paste. And so they are all our veggies, our garlic, our peppers, our onions, everything is set on the tray. We have our black beans separated in a bowl and we're gonna keep the liquid on the side because we are gonna use that in our stew later. So now we'll get a frying pan onto the stove, good and hot with some olive oil and we're only gonna use the green to our scallions and then half the onion and we're gonna go ahead and just throw that in until it's cooked and that delicious fragrance hits the air. And then once that's all good to go, you're gonna add in that Southwest spice and your garlic, and you're gonna give that a good toss until that's cooked through. And then we're gonna add in that Roma tomato and our tomato paste. We're also going to add in that chipotle paste and just kind of give everything a good stir. You're really creating a solid base. And once everything is cooked and incorporated all the way through, we're gonna add in our black beans, we're gonna add in that veggie stock, we're gonna add in the juice and the water, and you can kind of use the juice as you need it to and play with it a little bit. They don't want you to add all of the juice, you just add a little bit at a time to kind of keep the flavor. And then that really was it, you guys. It was that simple. You just let it sit on the stove for about 10 to 15 minutes and let it get good and thick, and then it was able to be plated. That was probably the easiest beef stew I've ever made, and they give you the shredded cheese to chop on top, the sour cream, you use the dark green part of the scallion now, which mama loves herself some green onion and holy cow this was so so good I love black beans and kind of any Tex-Mex flavor so I really really enjoyed this I love their Southwest blend and they list on their packets all their ingredients so it's super simple almost like a taco seasoning but this was so good I ate the leftovers of course for the next day's lunch but I never had a black bean stew before and that was super delicious so now here's another one of those recipes where you're able to swap out your protein. So the original recipe was for a thyme balsamic flavored pork chop, which sounds really, really good, but I am one for steak. So when I saw the balsamic glazed pork chops could be substituted for the ranch steak, I was all about it because their beef ranch steak is amazing. So we have chicken stock here, thyme, garlic, balsamic vinegar, zucchini, and some Yukon Gold potatoes. Now I went ahead and prepped all of our veggies. I got our potatoes cut up, our garlic, our zucchini, and I took all the thyme off of their stems. Well, some of it. Some you're gonna put whole into our gravy later. So now on a sheet pan, we're gonna go ahead and add those potatoes, our zucchini. You're gonna add some olive oil, salt and pepper, and some of that thyme, and you're gonna give everything a good mix. And then we're gonna stick it in a 450 degree oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. You just want your potatoes tender and cooked. And now in a frying pan onto the stove, we're just going to go ahead and cook the steak because it was supposed to come with a pork chop. It didn't have like a specific seasoning. So I just used Longhorn's steak seasoning and gave each side a good sprinkle. And then I cooked each steak till roughly about medium and then let it rest. I cleaned out the pan and inside of it, I poured that balsamic vinegar, that chicken stock. We had to do some brown sugar from home and then just a few more more of those full thyme leaves and once all of that melted down we put in a tablespoon and a half of butter that really brings such a rich flavor and then you're going to go ahead and add flour and just keep incorporating that until you can tell that you're getting a nice thickness to it because what we're doing is trying to create what you see there as a gravy so once it gets thick you remove those thyme sprigs and now you just have some gravy left over that's it once the potatoes and zucchini 
zucchini are done being cooked in the oven it's pretty simple it was just olive oil salt and pepper on them and so we have roasted potatoes and we have roasted zucchini and then we have that steak and that balsamic glaze like gravy was so good I love balsamic glaze I mentioned that in everything like I love the glaze I love the vinegar I love when it makes a good reduction so that was so good and thyme is such an underrated fresh herb and when you use it all the flavors that it brings out is just phenomenal so again this was supposed to be a pork chop but I'm glad that I chose the steak because mama definitely loves herself a good steak so now we're on to a farmer's market linguine. And again, like I mentioned, these are usually more for me and for lunches. They're perfect portions for that. And this is supposed to be with lemon and Parmesan. So it has zucchini, Roma tomatoes, button mushrooms, chives, garlic, and then you make like a lemon cream cheese Parmesan sauce to go over the linguine. And again, here's one of those times where you could add a protein. And so I added chicken because otherwise it was just roasted veggies and a pasta which for my diet probably pasta is not the way to go but if I could balance it with a protein I felt a little bit better so we have all of our ingredients here we just need to go ahead and get all these veggies prepped so I have our mushrooms zucchini tomatoes we zested a lemon we quartered it we have the chives cut and then I also peeled our garlic but I left the cloves whole because we're going to throw it in that little piece of tin foil that you see there on the sheet pan throw them all in there add a little bit of olive oil salt and pepper and then close up that tin foil and leave it like a little satchel of love so that garlic can roast in there while you're roasting your veggies so once you throw your mushrooms on there and you have all your veggies add a little bit of olive oil salt and pepper get those into the oven to roast and then get your linguine into a pot of salted water so that that can start cooking once our veggies were done and your garlic is finished, you're gonna go ahead and smash it and then throw it into a saucepan with a couple of tablespoons of butter, some water, some of your Parmesan cheese and the cream cheese, which now they're giving Philadelphia, so I love when they add in some name brands. You wanna go ahead and give that a good mix, add your lemon zest, add your chives, a good squeeze of the lemon juice, and then get that all mixed up. And so now our pasta is done so I drained it and then I went ahead and added it to that really lemon parmesan and roasted garlic flavor let me tell you what the roasted garlic flavor does and then I just did what I did what I showed you guys before and just used my grill pan for those chicken cutlets I didn't even share that part with you because it was adding a protein and it's not in the direction so I did what I did all the other times just a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper and got the the chicken breast cooked all the way through and then that was it you guys I put a little bit of the pasta into the bowl I split it between what I was eating now and the portion for the next day I split the veggies and then I did a piece of chicken on each one with the lemon and it was just so fresh and so delicious and these are probably some of my favorite meals from every plate now nothing like saving the best for last and this is the recipe I was telling you that my girlfriend's family fell in love with and this is the cheesy corn bisque with garlic bread and this you guys is a knock your socks off probably one of the easiest soups I've ever made but wow so you need onion garlic scallions corn milk veggie stock there's a baguette for the garlic bread we need some cream cheese some shredded cheddar some sour cream and some hot sauce and like I said they give that Cholula which is so so good so there are our ingredients and now we need to go ahead and prep so we have our scallions cut and separated whites and greens our onions cut our garlic diced and then our corn has been separated you do not need to save the juice you just need to drain it and then leave your corn off to the side so now in a saucepan I have a couple of tablespoons of butter and we're gonna go ahead and add our onion and then the whites of the green onion and you're gonna saute that down until everything smells really good and everything is good and translucent and now we're gonna add in a little bit of flour two tablespoons and give that a good mix because we're trying to make that thick roux to make a soup. Now, once you've mixed that through, you're gonna go ahead and add the milk that they provide and really get it to where you've released that flour. I did it little by little so I can just keep incorporating it. And then you can see that it starts to break apart
apart and it makes the soup good and thick. And so now you're adding some veggie stock and some water and give that a good mix. And then once it's bubbling and you can see how thick it gets, now you're gonna go ahead and add in the corn. Once you've mixed that all the way through, we're gonna add in our cream cheese, which really just adds that really yummy, delicious, creamy factor. And then you guys, that was pretty much it. I let it cook on the stove for another 10 or 15 minutes just for all the flavors to congeal. And then once I was ready to serve, I mixed in that shredded cheddar cheese. I will say that if you have an immersion blender or you wanna stick some of it in a regular blender, just to get a little bit more of a creamy consistency as opposed to the thick consistency, I definitely would recommend it. All right, it's time to do our garlic bread. And I wanna show you guys this of glove. My mother-in-law got it for me for Christmas and it is pretty stinking neat, you guys. It is just a glove that you wear that is so thick and durable. It was amazing for getting things out of the oven. I'll make sure to link that in my Amazon store below because that stinking thing was amazing. So now we're just gonna stick a little bit of olive oil in a little dish with some garlic and we're gonna stick it in the microwave and get it all hot. And then we're gonna put it onto our baguette and then stick the baguette in the toaster oven just to make a garlic bread. And then you're gonna serve it alongside of that bisque and we're gonna put a little bit of the sour cream and we're gonna squeeze a little bit of that Cholula on there which was just the right amount of bite and then the dark part of the green onions on top and holy cow you guys the trick is to take that garlic bread on the baguette and dip it into that soup and almost make it like a cheesy corn dip it is so amazing and I'm not surprised that my girlfriend's family has asked her to make it over and over again because I haven't stopped dreaming about it I've mentioned I'm the only one that eats soups especially chowders and bisques I just devoured it that day and I couldn't wait to get to the next portion the next day because it was so so good and probably one of the best soups slash recipes I've made from every plate thus far. All right, you guys, so that's it for this time's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and got a little bit of inspiration from every plate. Even if you don't sign up with them, I always say just live vicariously through me. I'm gonna keep using their service over and over again. So if I share their recipes, you guys can just go ahead and recreate them at home and you don't even need their service, you just need me. So how could you get any better than that? So again, I hope you guys enjoyed. Give this video a huge thumbs up. If you are new, I hope you'll subscribe and stick around since I share a whole bunch of foodie content here on this channel. I love you guys all so, so much and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.